Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back with another Cricut project, but I'm not in the craft room because today I'm showing you how to take a Cricut access file from the Cricut library and make these basswood little thankful signs for your Thanksgiving day tablescape. So these have been really popular the last couple years. I've seen them for sale, plenty of places. I've seen them all over Pinterest. I'm in love with them. They can say different things, thankful, grateful. They can say people's names if you want specific nameplates. But I really wanted some thankful ones and I didn't want to pay an arm and a leg. So I just headed to the Cricut Access Library and made them myself. Took a couple hours because wood does take a while to cut, but so worth it. I already had the basswood already had the spray paint so for me this was a quick easy free project and I'm going to show you exactly how to make it. Let's get started. All right so we're going to start by heading to the Cricut Access Library and I just searched for thankful and then I grabbed this thankful banner. So it actually has a few cut files in here looks like some leaves which I just delete because I don't need them and then two versions of the thankful word this one and the one I used. And I used the one with the banner because it fits well across your plates. Resize it to 11.2 and move it to the corner. And we're going to hit make it. Now we're going to resize our materials to 8.5 by 11 because that's the size of the basswood that I have. Hit continue. Browse all materials. And now we're just going to search for basswood. And when it pops up, it is the thicker one we're using today. This is going to tell you all of those important details, like to move your star wheels over and to put your basswood down using tape around the edges. You really, this thing is going to do 14 passes. So that basswood, like it needs to be stuck in place or your passes will be all over the place. I use my brayer to really firmly push that basswood down. And as you can see, the basswood I'm using is eight and a half by 11, not 11 by 11. So keep that in mind. It comes in different sizes. Now I'm gonna use some blue painter's tape and I'm going to go all the way around all four corners, really firmly pressing that down. This is literally the tape from the first one that I cut and I'm trying to reuse it. So it's a little funky, but it's still sticky enough that that works. You just need to make sure here I don't have quite enough on the left that it's all the way around all four corners. Otherwise, it just will peel up. It won't hold your basswood down. It won't work properly. There we go. All right. Smoothly across all four corners. Make sure you have a really good grip. Use that brayer if your fingers aren't enough, but I usually find for the tape my fingers are good. You can see on my Cricut that my white star wheels are already all the way over and my knife blade is loaded. Perfect. All right, let's load this baby into the machine. You wanna make sure it's in the top left-hand corner. Those star wheels will, there's the knife blade. They will leave marks on your basswood, so they need to be moved all the way over. And this is the final product. All right, let's cut it out. So now I'm going to hop over to my computer real quick and I'm going to click go and then I will hit go on the machine and it is going to start. Now you can see on the computer screen that I have down in the corner as it's processing, it will tell you how long it takes. So it's going to start by telling you percentages and it probably takes half an hour and 25% before it starts telling you a time. So at that 25% time, it started telling me there was an hour and a half left. So like I said at the beginning, I just come in every maybe 10, 15 minutes, five or 10 at the beginning, 10, 15 at the end. I make sure that everything's running smoothly. If any little pieces have come up from the basswood being cut, I kind of move them off of the basswood so that they don't trip up the knife blade. But other than that, I leave it alone and I let it do its thing. So now we're just going to watch it and see what happens.
All right, so once it's done, you can unload it from the machine. And if all goes according to plan, the pieces should be pretty close to popping right off. I do find that occasionally there are a few places that might not be cut a thousand percent through, sometimes in the corners. If that happens, I just use my little true control knife to cut through on those places. But for the most part, all of these little pieces were cut 100% of the way through. But you want to be very delicate, especially taking them off of your cutting mat because those that sticky background will want to keep the little pieces. There you go. So once you get it off, you don't want to tear any of those loops in the thankful word. Just start taking out each piece one at a time work your way across if you need to use your true control knife then you're good to go but otherwise they should come out fairly easily this little spot right here looks like it needs to be needs to be worked on a smidge if you do need to cut through make sure you use um, either your cutting mat behind the piece or something else that you don't mind getting cut. There you go. Wasn't that quick and easy? Now, not counting all the hours that it took to actually cut the pieces out because I think each one took about two hours on the Cricut Maker to cut. But once you get everything going, you're sure that it's working properly, I'll come back and check in maybe every five, 10 minutes. But I really went and cleaned my house while these cut, so not a total waste of time. I hope you liked these as much as I did. Of course, you don't have to spray them copper, but I wanted them to go with my little acorns. If you liked them, make, goodness gracious, acorn down. If you liked them, make sure to comment, like, subscribe. I will have plenty more projects coming up for you soon. See you later. Puppies are not happy. They're all crying. <laughs>